This video explains the basics of correlation and shows how to find a correlation between two assets step by step. Correlation measures the relationship between two variables. In finance, we use correlation to measure the relationship between the rates of change of two assets. If the two assets are positively correlated, it means that when one asset increases in value, the other asset tends to increase in value. And when one asset decreases in value, the other asset tends to decrease in value. If two assets are negatively correlated, it means that when one asset increases in value, the other asset tends to decrease in value. To measure correlation, we find the correlation coefficient r, which has a range between negative one to one. The closer the correlation coefficient is to one or negative one, the stronger the correlation between the two assets. If the correlation coefficient is close to one, it means that the two assets are strongly correlated. If the value of one asset increases, then there's a strong likelihood that the value of the other asset will increase as well. If the correlation coefficient is close to negative one, it means that the two assets have a strong negative correlation. If the value of one asset increases, then there's a strong likelihood that the value of the other asset will decrease. If the correlation coefficient is close to zero, then the two assets have little or no correlation at all. To find the correlation of two assets, we can use the correlation function built into Excel. Let's download the closing price of two assets, find the periodic daily returns of those assets, use the correlation function to find the correlation coefficient, and graph a scatter plot. For this example, I will use SOV and GOD, the silver and gold ETFs. The first step is to get the daily closing prices for each day. For a stock or ETF, we can download the daily closing prices from Yahoo Finance. On the Yahoo Finance page, type in a stock or ETF ticker symbol and hit enter. For this example, I am entering SOV, the silver ETF. After the information for the stock or ETF loads, click on the link titled Historical Prices in the left hand column. When the Historical Prices page loads, Select the appropriate dates to cover the range that is needed. Common selections are one year's worth of data, or all of the data over the life of the asset. Make sure that the daily time frame on the top of the page is selected. Now click on Get Prices. When the page loads, scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and click on Download the Spreadsheet. Save the file and open it in Excel or Google Docs. The file opens to show the date, the opening price, the highest price, the lowest price, the closing price, the volume, and the adjusted closing price for each day. Delete all information except for the date and the adjusted closing price for each day. Here is SOV's adjusted closing price for each day. To find the periodic daily return, click on the cell to the right of the first adjusted closing price. Type in equals LN in the open parentheses symbol. Click on the adjusted closing price, enter a slash for divide, click on the previous day's adjusted closing price, add the close parentheses symbol, and hit enter. This gives you the periodic daily return for that day. Now click on the bottom right corner of the cell and drag down. This will cause Excel or Google Docs to calculate out all the periodic daily returns for all the previous days. To find the correlation coefficient, in any empty cell type in equals C-O-R-R-E-L, open parentheses, select one of the columns of periodic daily returns, add a comma, select the other column of periodic daily returns, add a close parentheses, and hit enter. This gives you the correlation coefficient R. When finding the correlation coefficient of two assets, it is helpful to graph a scatter plot. To do this, select the column of periodic daily returns of one of the assets. Click on Insert, Scatter, and select the first option. This shows a scatter plot of one of the assets. On the graph, right click and click on Select Data. Click on Edit then put the cursor into the section to select the x values. 
Use the mouse to select the other column of periodic daily returns. Click on OK. This graphs a scatter plot of the data points of the periodic daily returns of one asset as the x values and the corresponding periodic daily returns of the other asset as the y values. A positive correlation graph will show an overall trend that is increasing from left to right. A negative correlation graph will show an overall trend that is decreasing from left to right, like this example of another correlation graph here. If there is little or no correlation between the two assets, the graph will show a miscellaneous scatter. When we draw a trend line through the scatter, the closer the scatter is to the line, then the stronger the correlation is. However, if the scatter is spread out, it shows a weaker correlation. So that is how to find a correlation between two assets step by step. Correlation is a useful tool in many areas. However, it is important to remember that correlation does not imply causation. In other words, just because two assets are correlated does not mean that the movement of one asset is causing the movement of the other asset. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.